Welcome back. Oh, yippers. I am I am vastly concerned for your father. <laughs> Which part? He's an 80-year-old ricer, though. That's what he is. <laughs> Hi, Amy. We're recording. Are you? Yeah, we're not live. You're fine. We're not live. Yet. She's got adorable. Broken axle gear on. She's adorable in every way. I don't even have. <laughs> I don't even have my lights set up right now. I don't I'm know. not even in broken axle stuff. I am in. Craig mm -hmm. is still on <laughs> vacation mode. I'm with you. Um, Minion is upstairs. I, I convinced him to come Amy. out of the Yes. Amy, you see how adorable I look? You look adorable. <laughs> the necklace is very california it's got a this is, yeah it's, it's uh it was a shark or uh it's the mayoran uh fishing hook right and then yeah, some maui, right? hippie the at the, the what from maui the kids movie you mean moana, moana. yeah oh, i was gonna say maui is the name like, of maui what kind of, yeah, Maui. The, Maui Wowie's over there? No, Maui, the, no, the rock. It's the Mayorans is what you're... Yes. Yeah, Mayorans is what you're thinking of. <laughs> Those are the, the actual islanders. But anyways, I was at the uh, the Pearl Harbor uh, swap meet, right? And this yeah. one hippie like lady who does like all the gems and magic and whatever, she's, she looks at me and she's like, you look like you're a survivor of bad times and I need to bless you. And so she just yanks this necklace off of me and then ties, I'm going to show you guys real close. She ties a piece of emerald to it. Okay. Like wires it to it, I guess. And she says that this piece of emerald is going to give me courage and good luck. And I decided that it's a, a weird story, but okay, we'll go with it. And Hey, it's not going to hurt, right? <laughs> yeah. Like at this point, you know, I got to, Every little I do bit the there. Christian thing, and I do the Buddhist thing, and I believe in the sea goddess, and you know, at this point, <laughs> right? Something's gonna stick. Hey man, it's like it's like everybody yeah. hates on the Green Army men until you need the Green Army men. Kind of reminds yeah. me of the kind of reminds me of the Mummy movie when the real slimy guy had like six different religious symbols of necklaces, and when the Mummy showed up, he's like holding <laughs> this one up, nope, holding this one up, nope, holding this one up. Hey man, you got to try try and see what works. Then the mummy recognizes yep. the star of David. Yeah. Minions. Before the minion realizes that I'm gone. Yep, yep. Bye, Craig. Bye, Amy. Bye. So, uh, Dad was pondering uh, making the Crown Vic less grandpa status. Oh, it's already it's already headed that direction with the uh, FR500 wheels that got slapped on it. Yeah, Mustang takeoffs, exhaust. Sadly, yeah, you're gonna have to do a lot of custom work for the exhaust. Uh, I mean, I thought about turboing it. Uh, stainless it. works and Borla. Yeah. No, I thought about turboing it and just sending the exhaust out of the front fender. I mean, you can, but that's really not a a livable yeah. exhaust system. I wasn't being real about it, but I mean, I feel like it can't be that hard to chop out the mufflers and put in some flow daddies. Yep. No, no, no. But what you really want to do to get like an authentic, like old school muscle car sound too, because um, you have a P seventy one, right? Yes. So it is a, a legit dual exhaust. Yeah, that's what yes. I'm saying. Just chop the mufflers out, put some Flowmaster forties in. It makes that classic muscle car. Yeah. So resonance. some mo fasters. I hate them. Yeah. But they so what right. I would recommend. <laughs> Go ahead, Craig. You could. What I would recommend is something that I've been wanting to try out specifically with the. Four or six. I'm gonna wipe off the camera here real fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess I should turn on the screen resolution too. The uh, what I've wanted to test out on both the Mustang and the Crown Vic is um, H pipe. You take the, you know, where it goes from the cats down, and then you mm -hmm. weld in. It specifically has to be a two and a half inch pipe that connects the two right right and then you weld in a plate between the two so it's a blocked off h pipe and then you drill i think it's a five eighths hole and that should replicate the bullet sound or get very close to it but that's going to mm. be the old school authentic like verbal it's funny you should I say think... that because 
I was just I looking something nice. up earlier today, and they were basically saying that the H pipe went more towards the old low the the old school muscle car sounds, and the cross pipes went more towards the tuner Mustang crowd as far as the sounds, the yeah, raspiness and stuff like that. It's yeah, so the, the classic American V8 sound comes from the H-pipe or yep. True Duels, and then yep. the X-pipe is a uh, flow exhaust scavenging, which is more European, it's raspy, mm-hmm. and that's the huge what difference talk- between like, the Challengers and the Mustangs. But what you're this. talking about with the uh, the two-and-a-half-inch plug in between the cross pipe with a hole drilled into it, I actually kind of feel a certain kind of way mm-hmm. about that because it kind of reminds me of wave guide theory and and resonance between different sides and that means that certain frequencies are going to pass through to the other side whereas some frequencies are going to stay in that side so it's very cool of course i'm the yeah, dumbass so that would have like a what i would look at valve for you in then be like trying to set up the butterfly valve to activate well, it at different speeds <laughs> just so i could say v-boost kicking what I would in. Do in your regards yeah what I would do in your regard is to do that H pipe design and then cut out the mufflers and then find some of the some stock axle backs from a Mustang that some guy's selling for a hundred bucks and just have them welded on and then do the do the uh, the pea shooter the straight like three mm-hmm. inch or two inch mm-hmm. straight back. Go big or go home. Well, the Marauder style looks good. Just a straight three inch rolled tip. Yeah, straight. That's three all inch they have is a straight three inch rolled tip, and it looks curve. thick. Have you seen the guys that have uh, taken the mufflers out and then opened up the top side of the mufflers, gutted the mufflers, and then welded them back together again and reinstalled them? I have heard of, like, modification of mufflers to try to do, like, what uh, Flowmaster does with the baffling. Yeah. But for yeah, 100, that's kind of a, 150 that's bucks, kind of a trap shoot. this is backs. just like... They just this, gut it entirely. Yeah, it's this just is just shell. gutting it entirely, so it's basically like an oversized mm-hmm. resonator. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, man. Uh, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Mustang takeoffs would probably sound good yeah. and still not be loud. I don't care if it's a little loud. I just don't want it, like, waking up the dead loud. I'm just saying, like, all the late model, like, late S197 and up cars, the factory Mustang exhaust actually sounds... Well, as Quite long good. as the exhaust pipe would be in a true dual system, you could probably run no mufflers on it, and as long as you kept your foot out of it, it wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> that is true. you got to run it back through 20 feet of car. You're not going to keep your foot out of it. Yeah, I know, but... Oh, Craig, uh, I got Dad also on the train for gears. Track, lock and, gear. a, track lock and a 410, baby. Well, it's, Craig was kind of the same way you were, thinking like, you know, I don't know how much, I don't know if I want more gear. It's like, yeah, you do. More gear. Yep. Don't fear the gear. Now, it is a it is a P71, yeah, but it does not have a track lock in it. Yeah. I mean, track locks are not expensive either. It's like... No. It's like 200 bucks. It's like they're dirt cheap. Yeah, it's just weird. I and thought all If you get like a used now. one, you can even rebuild them. We yeah, talked about the same thing, getting the, uh, getting the carbon fiber clutches and basically, what is that, the FRPP rebuild kit? Yeah, which is the mm-hmm. factory Cobra yep. parts. With a yeah. with a heavy-duty center spring? Yep, and then put in yourself a, a 73 or 75, whatever the, the percentage is, put that in, and then you'll be pretty much set for the road use. I think it's 73. Yeah. You're talking about 73, 75. The, you're talking about the it's center percent. Yes, yeah, the percent lockup. Yeah. Oh, you can, how you plate it. How so you do it locks the up. Yes. And the center spring add together to make up how aggressive. Oh, okay. Because, like, if you're on the gas, you want both wheels to lock up. But if you're only partially on the gas, you don't want the thing to lock up and spin you. So, like, unless you do. Like 73% was like the. Well, right. But, like, nobody wants like a 15 15 per, percent lockup and then you don't have any um, okay so is this like the american than... version of a of a one one and a half or a two on the jdm for the for the rear ends i mean 
kind of sort of no not. so one way is is locked up if you have power attached to it one and a half way is lock up if you have power and if you're off gas then it kind of has lock up and two ways lock either direction yeah what i'm talking about is pure on the clutch packs how tight you want it to actually lock up or not how and if you want it like compact the springs or how you do yeah. the spring and the want, clutch pack yeah so if you want it locked up all the time it'll be like a welded diff and you're going to be chirping tires around corners no nah. and and if you don't want it welded up and you want it like loose or whatever else, you can go down like a 30% lockup, which means it's only on, you know, high torque, high torque sensing. I didn't realize, things. I didn't realize they were adjustable. I thought they were only meant to yep. be set up a single way. Mm-mm. No, the, uh, the order that you stack those uh, clutches and steels together mm-hmm. changes it. Mm-hmm. And then also the center spring. Yeah. We actually, okay. So, we watched a uh, YouTube the other night of uh, some dude doing that rebuild with the Cobra parts. And he did okay. the right clutch stack in the correct Cobra configuration. Yeah. But and then he put the... The weak, S, the weak sauce S-spring from the original pull back. He didn't use the Cobra S-spring. Mm-hmm. So it was, he was like, like it was welded the whole time? Well, no, he was like the you know the S-spring that puts preload on the clutches. He thought the Cobra spring was mm-hmm. going to be way too stiff to get into the case. Because you have to compress it to put it in. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, that's kind of the point, right? Like, for it to have preload. It's supposed to be preloaded yeah. hard. Yeah. But we anyway. Used to, we used to do uh, so Auburn. just not lock up. Yes. I, I have no idea what his result yeah. was, but. That's usually the result of a weak S-spring, though. Is you get a track lock that kind of sort of works, but not really. Yeah. Like I, didn't, one, I didn't exactly. That's why you guys need to go to the big, super expensive Torsen T. T2R race, race diffs. <laughs> That's one of the first things Dad was That's looking one at. One of the things I was looking at, I found a Torsen in the six hundred dollar range, but my my axles are not set up for it because all of the Torsens are thirty one, yeah. thirty two plus spline, and I've got the twenty eight spline, so not twenty eight. Yep. Oh. So yeah. it's just going to be track lock big dog modifier. Well, me and Craig went through this when he had his S five fifty. Sure. That the Torsen is cool, but it's just not worth the price. Unless you're tracking the car on the regular. Yeah, but you're well, not. Just, it just was like, at nine hundred. Go ahead. Yeah, it was at nine hundred fifty dollars, which I paid for the one that I got from Texas. Or supposed to get yeah. from Texas, and then disappeared yeah. on me. Yeah. Uh, UPS lost he, the differential. He had a, it was a three seventy three. No, no, I, I think UPS sent it. No, it. No. Yeah. And then it. Well, the package, the the weight of the package never left Texas. So I think someone got the wiser of what it was and lifted it, or they legitimately had a box failure and then dropped it and then threw it away and then nailed the empty box. Because the California UPS weighed it and said, hey, this thing is not, you know, 120 pounds like it's supposed to be. And they informed me, hey, your package is, you know, missing. Yeah. So I don't think the seller, they, I don't think the seller boned you. I think he gave it to UPS and then they just fucking. No, I mean, he had the, he had the, rec- he, no, he had he had the full like printout receipt. It said 120 pounds in a pallet, so like I know he sent it. Yeah, UPS lost it, and then hard to lose. Yeah, and he gave me he gave me my money back. They lost they lost a a, a 300 ZX manual transmission on Steven years ago. Yep. Yeah. What a Z32? What is that? The FR 513. Yeah. The good Z trans on yeah. a pallet to send to Big somebody. One. Yeah, and fucking mm-hmm. UPS lost a transmission. They don't lose that yeah. shit. Somebody I mean, that knows what it is said, hey, I'm taking this home tonight. Yeah, and they I think that's exactly car. what happened, it's especially being in in Texas. I think uh, UPS lost it. Someone found out, hey, this is a, a diff that they could turn around and sell for like $1,500. Exactly. So, anyway, so I'm going to say what... But that I'm was, with that was a full... Yeah, that'll work for you, and it's just a quick rebuild. And while you're in there, and you take the axles out, I also do the bearings, the uh, um, axle bearings. We discussed that today, seals and bearings mm-hmm. on the ends. Why yeah. not? You've already got to pull the axles, yeah, or at least that, or at least pull the axles far enough to get the diff. You might as well go ahead and pull them the rest of the way and replace the bearing in the... I mean, mine's got 230,000 miles on it, but the engine's got 130. It's a Panther, though. It's good. It's good for a million yeah. miles. And if you do... Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you do that rear end, you're not going to have to do it ever again. It's going to outlast either of you. So, 
That is true. It's got a quarter mil on it now. You put fresh bearings in it and put it back together, oh, yeah. like you're done. Make good for another quarter million dollars. Yeah, at least. And yeah. you take a look at the current bearings, and then that'll tell you how, how much life it had left. Take a look at what bearings? The current bearings when you pull them out. Oh, yeah. Fill yeah. it up with synthetic it's and then never good. touch anything. Yeah, actually, I was uh, telling Steven that I'm not going to start modifying it severely or, <laughs> or in earnest until... One Wanda gets her her little Thunderbird, Thunderbird, or whatever it is she's wanting. And two, I've got to have a garage that I can actually put it up on a lift and do stuff with. Because at first I was a little bit worried about the track lock because I read something about how quickly it'll burn up the clutches in a track lock. And then Stephen and I got to talking about it, and I realized that it's if you've got a lift, it's what an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops to drop your fluid, uh, pull your, pull your diff cover, you know, pull your axles, pull your, pull your clutches and plates, slap it all back together again, top it back off with fresh fluid and friction modifier. And you're done again for a while. I mean, yeah, the lifespan thing on track locks is not yeah, that and deal until they get tracked. Yeah. If you're, if you're putting a lot of heat into it, that's one thing. If you're just driving it, then. Yeah, I mean, they die. They and do even, die. Even a night at the drag strip's not going to kill them. No. Yeah. No, they die over like 30 or 40,000 miles. They're not going to kill themselves after one pull. No, they die after 30 or 40,000 miles. Yeah. Although it is weird how, like, every Mustang with one that has, like, 100K like... on it, that bitch is smoked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what'd you start well, to ask? Mustang also. Yeah, fair point. What'd you start to say? Well, I was going to say that, like, when. Uh, you... I think you can do the C-clip eliminators too and actually take out like a major step of pulling the diff, right? So we were talking about that, but I don't, if you're not going to leave, if you're not going to be leaving on a radial, I don't know that it's that big of a deal. I know, but just for assembly of the diff itself, it's one step that you don't have to worry about. I guess that's true. I never found taking the clips out to be that big of a pain. True. Like true. you take the cover, you have to take and the cover honestly, off. if you're not doing a, a ring and pinning, yeah. If you're not changing out the pinion at all, then the, the yeah. what four bolts that holds the thing in. Oh, you don't have to take that out. Take like the track lock out. You don't have to take those four bolts out. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all, everybody all, you gotta, all you got to do is pull the axles out. Yeah, you pull the C-clip, slide the axles out a couple inches, just enough to clear the housing. Yeah. Roll, roll the ring and pinion yeah. around to where the window is facing you and pull the cross pin that holds the yeah. spider gears. And that's it. And then the spider gears and the clutch yeah. packs all come right out the center. You leave the ring and pinion in there. Okay. So you, yeah, you're only taking out the diff the diff carrier then for the uh, the ring and pinion change. Yeah. And then after that, that's yes. what I'm talking about. Track lock rebuilds. If you're yeah. not actually taking the carrier out, are like a non-event. Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, might the might of the the Ford eight eight. Yeah. You know, it's easy money, but that's why I don't understand why pe more people don't rebuild them. Because all, like the Explorer ones, everybody gets these 100,000 mile Explorer rears with a track lock, mm -hmm. but it's a smoked track lock because it's got like 100,000 right. miles on it. Yeah, but what does it matter? The rebuild mm -hmm. 100 and a half. But no one rebuilds them is the thing. Well, then why are you bothering to get a track lock? No, they take them yeah. out. They'll throw in, they'll throw in eating units or throw in lockers or yeah. everything but a track lock. Because they'll use the track lock that's, you know, got 100K on it, and they're like, this thing sucks and barely locks up. And you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> it's beat. Yeah. You know, I could practice on my truck. What? Putting the track lock in. <laughs> Why? Because the one peg leg doesn't do great when it's wet and muddy <laughs> coming up my road. And, oh, the lunch, and the lunch box locker exploded, so... I mean, I would honestly probably try another lunchbox in it. What, in the truck? Yeah. You realize that the last yeah. lunchbox locker exploded, right? Right, but we don't know how it was treated. Besides badly. Yeah. When he bought the red and white uh, Ford, it had uh, mm -hmm. some 33-inch mud boggers on just the rear. And some sort of lunchbox locker in the rear end. But it hooked up. I mean, it sounds like it's a... Uh, it was a hard life. Oh, yeah. it was a hard life. 
and it had a fresh clutch in it. Unrelated, probably. And the smoothest and the smoothest shifting M five O D. Right? Hard life. Best shifting M five O D I have ever yeah. seen in my life. Like better than most T fives. I, I actually understand. wanna I actually wanna get rid of the three hundred and replace it with the uh four two um the Atlas the Atlas motor. You know that only comes with one transmission, right? You say that, but you can bolt the it, it only comes with one transmission. But you can bolt the It comes with the Colorado five, right? No. Huh? Yeah, the Colorado five speed lines up with it. Yes, but you need a custom flywheel. What? Yeah, the Colorado five so the, the issue isn't the transmission, it's the it's the packaging. It's you need the flywheel and the clutches that go with it. Yes. And it requires a custom flywheel. So who makes that? I mean, how custom can it be? How custom can it be? It's just a flywheel. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, I forget what it's the tooth a TM. Count is, but it's, it's like a very tooth count. Together Lego yeah. part. I've often wondered if the uh, if the it's, no, it's not though. The Atlas motor is not a GM product. It's it's a it's a European GM thing, so it's all I weird. Know. And the transmission, the AR five, is not G, is not GM either. That's an ASIN unit. So none of it's none of it is GM. Does the uh, I thought the five cylinder flywheel worked, or physically bolted on anyway? No, really. No, the starter's in the wrong spot. Uh-huh. The five and four cylinders you start us from the transmission side, or it's it's one is the other, so it doesn't work. So you need to use the the starter from the the Vortec, the forty two hundred. Hmm. But yeah, so you can make an AR five work. You can also work with the Pontiac. It's guy. the MA fifteen. Which is the which is the Pontiac Sky transmission? Because mm-hmm. that also uses a derivative. And evidently, it's or old you just do bell bell housing. Housing. Yeah, there's some people doing crazy. Yeah, bell I housing. mean, so it's yeah the AR the A was it the AY6 and the AR5 transmissions. They're not really rated for more than 400 foot pounds. However, manual transmissions take power a lot easier than the 4060 does. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's and, the other um, thing, right? Because what's your other option? A built 4060 and pray? Well, you like, yeah, you do you do a, a custom like TKO 600 six speed. Yeah. With a custom bell housing. But like that, so that'll hold. But like, you're getting into, why not just go with like a Yanko at that point? Right? Yeah. For a truck, I don't know, man. Again, it's, all, it's all custom bell housings. The shitty part to me is that an 80 doesn't work because otherwise this would be so much easier. An 80. Before uh, again, it's the bell housing. If if, yeah, if, bell housing problem. if GM uses standard seven bolt bell housing, then yeah, there would probably be adapter kits for it already. Craig's been eyeballing. Also, that engine is not really forever. Yeah, but I imagine so, you I want to make it. a super six car because everyone does V8s nowadays. Exactly. The the green one, yeah. I was yeah. act, I was actually looking at and Stephen took some insane, which he's probably right, but um, either the LS mm-hmm. or the Hemi from Dodge, the bolt patterns are not that. I wouldn't do anything off. Hemi. I'm sorry. No, I'm not talking about using the. Said I wouldn't mess with anything Dodge or Hemi. Yeah. What? Haterade. Haterade. Uh, I'm not talking about using the engine. I'm talking about using a part. It's money. Uh, I'm sorry? They are money. The Hemi motors are... Oh, yeah. It's He's money. It's using... Anything Hemi Chrysler head. product is more expensive than Ford or Chevy. Yeah. He's talking about using the Hemi head on the 300. The Hemi... Yes. Oh. It's money. Yes. It's not terrible I mean, money. For, for for the same price, you could probably... You could probably ask somebody to make you a, a no. custom cast aluminum head and then pour it no. out yourself versus no. just take a Hemi head. And I've already seen several people that have done the LS1 or some of the LS heads on where they've split the mm-hmm. uh, V8 into two sets of three cylinders and brazed those back together again. To make an inline six LS To make head. an inline six Do they LS cut it at the chamber or do they... No, they cut it in between yeah. chambers. Do they cut it across the chamber? Do they cut it? 
in between in the water two. jacket. Yeah, cut out the water jacket so you have a, a front. So you need, three, a you need three. Sorry? Nope, just two. Two heads. You cut one cylinder you off each one. cut one cylinder off of each head and re braze those back together again. Okay. So you end up with a six cylinder head, LS head for a Ford 300. And the bore spacing like yeah. almost works. Well, yeah. you remember the old, yeah, you know the joke with the whole LS, right? Like it was a Ford design engineer who didn't like what Ford was doing. So he took the Windsor modified block and brought it over to Chevy and that's how they got the LS. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. I believe no, it. Somebody else is actually Ford design. Chevrolet go over to Ford and convince them to start using the same bolt patterns on everything so that you can interchange shit. We were just talking about the other day about wheels. Ford is the worst. Yeah. The, 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 the mod motors are all... Wheels. The mod... Yeah. There's a there's getting to be a delay now. I don't know if it's uh, afternoon traffic or not. I see. No, I'm just saying. Uh, no, yeah, I'm just saying. It. If you want to put larger brakes on a GM, you just look for the biggest GM you can mm-hmm. find, and the brake calipers are going to bolt up. Yeah, it's uh, seven and or it's four and seven, four point seven five seven six. It's whatever I have on the truck. That's your standard it, GM big bolt pattern. Yeah, but I'm saying on um, the and brake. The small ones like, yeah, it's not just wheels though, right? It's, it's not like just wheels. And everything. The brake mounting pattern is the same yeah. between the smallest and the biggest of it's, the GMs. It's the it's the mounting ears, and then it's also the offset because I can use the 2020. Um, yeah, I was telling Dad about your your brake upgrade. Yep. With like Eldorado parts and 2020 truck parts and all kinds of stuff. No, the the Eldorado caliper. Well, the Eldorado, the rear caliper. Yeah, yeah, that's for the rears. That's the three. It makes uh, perfect sense spacing. because that's the one that's got the lever that you can actuate the uh, parking brake, uh, the lever that clamps the shoes or the yep. the pads onto the disc. Yep. But I'm saying like that's. I don't know if you saw Stephen. LT was actually talking about doing the four piston caliper conversion to his truck. Yeah, and was looking for spindle options. And I think the spindle option he's going to do is actually take the NBS spindle and then have the holes enlarged for the bigger ball joints for the older truck. Swap over, do a spindle, and break upgrade, basically. Huh. But you can do that in yeah. a GM. You can't do that shit in a Ford. No, that's true. Yeah, why would you? I'm just saying Ford's way less Lego-like when yeah. it comes to stuff like that. GM's like GM's like Legos. Hell, how do yeah, you think they are? They do it. They do it for the cost, but it's not anything against Ford in that regard. And Ford also does a lot of stuff that's like you have the era, right? You have pre ninety four and post ninety four. Yep. The mod motors all work with their transmissions. They got a. There's a guy out there with a Godzilla engine that's a mod motor block that uses the standard Mustang transmission. He's already made it together. Yeah, I mean, so how's he? How's he, control, how's he controlling that transmission? Oh, he's using a Mustang six. It's a oh. manual. Manual. Well, I've already yeah. said. I've already yeah. said if the V10 in Wanda's tank goes out, a 7.3 Godzilla is going to be a replacement. That V10 is not going to go out though. <laughs> that's You're like right. one of three engines out there that survived like the endurance test. You're right. There was a cockroach that said, "I'm going to be here forever," sitting on the valley of the engine. It was just like whatever. I might bleed mm-hmm. you to death in coolant leaks and everything else, but I'm not going to go bad. Speaking of, uh, one yeah, you. yeah, you're saying it's not going to go bad. Steven and I have already thought about throwing boost on that bitch. Just a little, like five pounds. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. You get that, you get that torque from big displacement. Yeah, exactly. It needs it at 8,000 pounds. Yeah. It probably won't even get any worse yeah. gas mileage. Literally, probably when, helped, we first, when we first got it, we were sitting at a stop sign, and I said, I'm going to give it the juice, and stomped on it. It was like, uh, it was no, no jerking motion or anything else. It was like you, you practically had a diesel inside of it for the, you know, for the lack of massive yeah. acceleration. 
but it doesn't matter if you got one person in it or eight. The other weird thing yeah, is that thing's got again is what you get. Twelve yeah. shit, that's optimistic. Shit. On a on a falling off the cliff, heading downhill with no air, no road beneath it, I might get mm-hmm. twelve. It gets like ten point three. It gets yeah. ten point something. It's uh, it's pretty bad. Wow. It's abysmally bad, actually. Actually, you mentioned that about the Godzilla up to the manual. I wonder if that Godzilla would work with a six or a ten speed. Yeah, all the Ford mod motors. The automatic. Yeah, they all have the same bell. All housing. the Ford mod motors, they use the same bell housings and offsets. It's just so a matter does of the seven three come with an automatic in the truck? Yeah, it's a ten speed. Yeah, it's, it's going to be go. the heavy duty, the, the big big one. There you go. Yeah, that's what needs just, to go in the excursion. It's money, Papa. Yeah, that. It's not that bad. Papa, if it's you money. Get one that's the, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, but it's not that bad if you get one at the, uh, what's the wrecker's name? Uh, Copart? Copart. Yeah, no, that's probably true. You give it like four or five years for them to start showing up. I would. The problem problem that no one's thinking about is that this motor is not going to be optioned compared to the diesel. And so finding it at the wrecker, someone else is going to jump on it until the aftermarket basically either makes it not cool or makes it too cool. And therefore it's now just common. That's the problem. Even a wrecked, you you have to buy a full wrecked F three fifty or F two fifty with a package, and those yes. are twenty of them sold or whatever. Yes, he's got a point though. It's not going to sell very well. I would still rather compared no, to it's what? going to be the diesel, the diesel or the other diesel, the baby V eight. The six the six seven diesel is phenomenal. Well, that's what I'm saying though. I get so you right. I'm going F two fifty and be the diesel. The people period. that want the nice motor are going to pay for the six seven. And the corporate fleets are going to get the cheap uh, yeah. bottom of the barrel. What is that? The 6.2? Is it the 5.8? Five 5.8. Eight? Five eight. Something. 6.2 is the new Chevy HD. I, I think Ford, Ford has the 5.8 well. mod motor. But yeah, the, the cheap fleet guys are going to go for the cheap, the bottom of the barrel one. Uh, all I know is the 7.3 is the awesome motor. It is, but I'm afraid it's not going to sell well. Oh, for the uh, Craig to you. It's going to be uh, going to be an anomaly. Yeah, for the thing we were asking about the Crown Vic uh, wraps. You ever done a whole car? Yeah, okay. I have never done a whole car. Um, I have not done a whole car. However, it's the Crown Vic is going to be the easiest car to wrap because there's nothing sharp edges about it. No, it's all curves. That's the major. Yeah, that's the major hard part with cars is, is hard ed- hard edges and then getting it to bend and form. Um, it would probably take me three or four days to get perfect. The The big thing is, is disassembly. To get it perfect, you need to disassemble stuff. Doors need to come off, fenders need to come off. If you do the, the janky just outer layer or whatever else, then it gets a little bit easier. But like window trim still needs to come off or I'm tucking that and it takes more time. Um Headlights and tailings need to come off or it takes more time, that kind of stuff. But on a Crown Vic, all that stuff comes off really easily. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it has to come off, and then you have to deep clean it, so it's, like, spotless. And then I would I would paint correct as best as I can and throw a wrap on it. And that's actually what you're paying with with the full vinyl wrap. The vinyl only costs $400 or so. And if you get a custom vinyl, then probably maybe 800 but it's the time. It's three days or two days of time times eight hours. That's what you're paying the 1600 bucks for. We were looking. It looked like it'd only be like three fifty ish for uh, for a solid color. For a solid color, for the yeah. vinyl itself. Yeah, I was yeah. looking at it's a what did I say? Uh, a dark. Uh, yeah, some kind of metallic like gray. A metal metal flake gray or a, a, like a what do you call it? Yeah. Gun metal. Yeah, something like DSG, like dark dark shadow gray, the Ford color. Yeah, I have some. I have some vinyl patches here. I had some. But I was actually looking at doing gray for the truck before I fell in love with not gray. Well, right now his uh, his Crown Vic. Also, is, you're uh, right. The six two is the Super Duties. His his Crown Vic is uh, Grandpa Gold, same color your truck is. It's the that, fastest like, color in the world. Have respect. I know, but it's, it's this like no color. It's not even a yeah. color. It's like this nondescript. Literally, my registration says it's beige. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a 
it's a beige tan, and then I don't know what the Crown Vic is, but on the truck, the pewter metallic has a gold and silver flake in it. But it's the most nondescript color possibly imaginable. And it's, what was it? It was tan. It's still, it's still the Yellow. fastest color in the world. Fastest car in the world? Fastest color. Oh, fastest color in the world. No, fastest, fastest color. Yeah, the fastest stock bottom end street truck LS is a uh, pewter metallic step side. Craig's happy about that. But yeah, he was thinking about with the uh, FR 500s looking sick on the car, and uh, I sh- I sent him your message where I showed it on the group chat, and you were everybody was like, it needs to go low. Oh God, yes, mm-hmm. it needs to drop a bunch. But I'm not start with. Well, yeah, it needs to it needs to be a modest drop because you, it's the whole point of Crown Vic is still to cruise. Yes. I don't like guys. So who, when I uh, say it needs to bunch, drop a bunch, it's only because it's already sitting on the police springs, so it's like three inches, nearly three inches taller than stock. Yeah, between the police springs and the fact that the Mustang yeah. wheels are taller than the stock wheels. Yes. It has co-conspired yeah. to make yeah. it oddly I just, tall. I just want about a three inch drop. Basically, I'm not talking about putting it in the weeds, but at least the tops of the tires tucked a little bit under the fender instead of being able to put a fist well, the entire way around the it, tire. What's up? Yeah, it would behoove you to wait until his tires are no good and then swap to Crown Vic size tires and then do the drop. No way. Because whatever you do now, whatever you do now is gonna is gonna be affected by if you go to the standard Crown Vic size tire. He doesn't want to go to the Crown Vic size tire. Twenty seven inches. Twenty uh, twenty six and twenty six and a half is what's on it now. Okay. Okay. He wants to go to the popular Mustang size, which is like a twenty seven and a quarter. Yeah. The two seventy five forty nineteen. Yep. Which I think actually works on the Crown Vic's wheel wells. It's got the wheel wells for it. Yep. It does. It just needs to be a lot lower. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not talking about slamming it or, or or laying frame or nothing, but but damn. I mean, four inch, a three inch drop kit is like that's excessive though. Right, but that's only like an inch and a half from police height. How- Put that on there first and see. Well, I'm well, saying, like, you know what I'm saying? How is three inches down from do police height, it, only like an inch and a half from sh- normal, like, town car height? Yeah. How do you, you start do, looking how at do like you that? Lower it, though? That's the question. I'm oh, sorry. same way you do. How do I lower it? Coilovers. Old school, baby. Screw coilovers. I'm cutting, I'm chopping, <laughs> sprint, I'm chopping coils. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? This thing is going to be Redneck Mobile if he has his way. Why are you shaking your head? You got distressed American flag, chopped the coil over springs. Are you Hell 16 yeah, again? Brother. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. I'm, I'm going to see if YouTube. police are going to invite me down to, to run with neighbor. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so, ADTR makes a coil over suspension set for the car. Yes. Along with a Watts link. What year is it? Else. Oh three. Oh three. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be about three grand for the. Uh... Nope, it's about two grand for the coilover system. Yeah, it'll be about fifty bucks in Harbor Freight cutting discs. <laughs> You're ridiculous. I don't understand what's wrong with cutting a little bit out of the police. Go ahead. What's wrong with cutting springs? Everything. Everything is wrong with cutting springs. Well, you get more body roll that way. Which way? Cut springs. Yeah. Yeah. If you cut springs, you get more body roll, even though you sit lower. And then the shocks are, in theory, outside of their just or um, their workable, usable range. That's something I'm running into on the truck, right? I dropped it a lot, and I put in the the Beltec low shocks, and mm-hmm. I put in the shock extenders, but the rear end still doesn't have enough travel by itself. So I'm going to go in with a full, full underframe notch, and then uh, go to a shock relocation, and that should give me the movement that I want. Oh, you got to get moving here in a minute. Yeah, I do. I was just looking it up. Yeah. <clears throat> well. You can ride out. Hmm? I said, go ahead and ride out. And make sure you get mom her food. Yes. Yep. I've just got to be, be nice to mom. Food. What's that? 
What's that, Craig? Said, be nice to moms. Oh, yeah. God, yes. It's all right. I already threatened her and told her that she could not fall in love with the Crown Vic, and she has told me repeatedly that she is not in love with the Crown Vic by any means. She wants a turquoise Thunderbird. Yes. <laughs> you noticed Craig's face? He had the exact yes. same face we did. <laughs> and the bad part is, when we went to dinner this evening, mm-hmm. we went to Lowe's after dinner, and pulling out of the Lowe's parking lot mm-hmm. was like a 370 convertible. A Nissan. And I'm like, why can't mm-hmm. she like that? Why can't she want that to be her play car? I'd be all about it. Because Ford designs cars to sell to, to women. That's why. Yes. Well, it's her. So it's a weird one, though, right? Because, like, I was telling Craig when she was shopping uh, Thunderbirds and he was helping me look at I tried to convince her. SC430. I tried. I, I, I tried I, to convince the both of them. She I'm does. like, it's a four liter, it's V8, <laughs> it'll last forever. No, I was saying, like, there was the weird turnabout mm-hmm. for a few days when she thought she might want a Marauder, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'd this is good. About, I'd be all about the Marauder. Everybody loves Marauders, including Craig. Mm-hmm. But but she doesn't necessarily <laughs> make sense with her likes and dislikes. I just found out today she doesn't yep. want to go through the automated car wash that we put on Steven's account because she can't see out of the car when she's going through the car wash because it covers all of the windows. She doesn't, she's not behind, she's not, she shouldn't be on the gas. Car wash pulls you through. No, exactly. Yeah. It's one of those tunnel style ones where like they put your front tire in the little chalk thingy and then you let go of everything and it just drags you through the tunnel and it moves you. And it does a hell of a good job. Yeah, there's no, there's but no steering needed. But there's about not being able to see no. outside of the car that she doesn't like. Huh. Well, all righty then. I yeah. like the clean car. Thank you so much for listening to the Broken Axle Podcast. If you enjoyed us, please leave a comment and like and subscribe for more. And if you want to help us out, we've got a new merch line. You can check the links below and follow our social media at the Broken Axle Podcast. And you can find me on Instagram at nomadic.wheelman. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as just can't drive 55. For the rest of us, hug your kids and call your mama. And go bust some knuckles.